God has been really stirring in my heart this need for adventure, this need to write a great story. Welcome to the Discovery Base Camp here. We're gonna climb a mountain today here in the Dolly Sods of West Virginia. We're gonna go on this adventure and Jesus said, hey, I've come that you might have life and life to the full. I think a lot of times we all need to check the diagnostics in our own life and say, you know, am I living a life of great adventure or have I settled for so much less? So we're about to explore. So are you ready here for the series you are here? How about you guys? You guys ready? Woo! All right, let's do this. Well, welcome to Mahaffey Manor. Um, I am super excited about next Sunday, September 27th, to get to see so many of you again at Discovery's new home. If you don't know the way, we'll throw the address there in the chat. But, but if you're ready to come back, we hope to see you there. But if not, hey, no pressure. We still will have our digital experience. It's not going anywhere. But if you do come, please be ready to be flexible, be full of grace. Because the fact remains that our building is still an active construction site and physical distancing still needs to be recognized. So just come with the proper expectation that it will not be the same experience that it was back in March before all this began. Um, we're going to have worship. We're going to have a message. We're going to give together. We're going to take communion together. I am very much looking forward to all of that. You know, last week, we introduced Discovery's new and refreshed logo of the map pin or the location pin. But if you come next Sunday, you will be among the very first to get some free swag with our new logo on it. Yes, I said free swag. So make sure you pick your stuff up next week when we get together again. The, the map pin, you know, it's an extremely helpful tool on Google Maps when you need to find your bearings. As a matter of fact, even this morning, I got a message from the film crew asking for our, our new address of our new house. And so I went to Google Maps to get the address, but I noticed that the map pin actually showed that our house was like two streets away from where it actually is. So I had to go in and, and, and reset that, make sure Google knew where, to, where our house is. You see, the map pin is an important tool. The map pen clearly communicates, you are here. And that's what the series is all about when it comes to your journey with Jesus. You know, 2020 has been an incredibly faith-stretching year. Many of us have faced unforeseen challenges that we're still trying to overcome. I mean, in my own life personally, I know people who are battling, battling COVID-19. Marriages teetering on the edge. A good friend of mine called me recently who just found out, out of the blue, lost his job. Man, it's easy in a season of pain like this one to feel like you've, you've lost your sense of direction. I know that there have been times in my life over the past few months where I have felt that. And through this series, I just want to encourage you to check the location of your spiritual life. Honestly answer the question, where am I at right now with God? Am I, where am I at following Jesus? You know, when God walked this earth in the form of Jesus, He would walk up to people and, and offer them two incredibly powerful words. He would say to them, follow me. And Jesus is still saying those words today to you, to me in the middle of 2020. He invites us us to choose his way, his path, to navigate through this life. But here's the thing. He, he, he's not going to beg you. He's not going to physically force you to follow him. His way is the adventure of a lifetime, but you have to choose it. And the tragic thing is most people aren't. I mean, Jesus said these words. He said, enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, broad is the road, that leads to destruction. Other translations call it the highway to hell. He said, many enter through it. It's what's normal in our culture. Then Jesus said, small is the gate. Narrow is the road that leads to life. 
and only a few find it. And Jesus even more clearly communicated how we choose to follow him on his path, on his way. He said, if anyone wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. You got to get off that road. Take up your cross, deny yourself, and follow me. You know, when we were preparing for our hiking trip, our, our camping trip into the West Virginia wilderness, our guide, Jason Grizzly Adamson, uh, sent us a map of the hiking trail as well as an elevation map of our journey. And, and you see there, the, the, the lower area is where we set up our tents, our, our base camp. But then about 1,600 feet up, roughly three miles up, is the summit of Breathed Mountain. You know, if Jesus were to show us an elevation map of the journey that He is going to take us on, I believe it would look sort of like this. And the, and the journey, it starts here where our new logo is. That, that, that where the map pen is. Because all of us start from the same place, the same trailhead. Because God's word makes it clear that all of us have sinned and fall short of the life that God has created us to live. That we all chose to go our own way. We all chose to become enemies of God. That instead of pursuing God, our lives have been consumed by chasing after all these other things, things like money, things like our own success, the, the su success of our kids, a bigger house, better cars, sports, sex, pleasure. Those are the things that Jesus was talking about when he said, you know, everyone is on that wide road chasing after the same things. It's what's normal. But you don't want normal, do you? That's not the adventurous life that you were created for. And God is so crazy about you that He sent His Son, Jesus, to not only die for you, to, um, to not only take your place for the punishment that you deserve because of your sin, but He also sent Jesus to live for you. You see, Jesus trailblazed this life. He showed us how to live life to the fullest extent. He said, follow me. This is the way. The crazy thing is, Jesus actually wants more for your life than you want for your life. He has immeasurably more in store for you, more than you could ask for or imagine. And he is inviting you to go on the journey of a lifetime. So the first part of the journey, going from here to here is accomplished by saying yes to Jesus. It's, it's giving up on your own way and following Jesus. He calls us being born again. And for good reason, because in a very real sense, you, like a little child, you're learning to walk almost all over again. You know, saying, G saying yes to following Jesus for me has been such a great adventure and I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. The adventure Jesus has called me on is to not settle for an average marriage like I see so many people have where they just kind of tolerate each other and exist to carpool the kids around different sports practices. But to, but to serve one another, to challenge one another, to, to grow closer to Jesus together and to passionately pursue one another you know, marriage is, is just one of many phenomenal adventures when you're following Jesus. It's led Janie and me to the adventure of building our family through adoption. It's, it's led us to care less about ourselves and, and be more generous with the resources that God has put into our hands. It's led us to traveling to some pretty cool places and seeing what God is up to in other parts of the world like Iraq and Haiti, Colombia, and El Salvador. It's led us to a great church family like Discovery. But here's a word of warning to you. If you say yes to Jesus, if you get off your way and, and you follow Jesus, His way is not for the faint of heart. There are going to be moments that you look around and go, where is everybody else? But you know what? It happened to Jesus too. 
So you just keep following the trail that he has blazed for you. He will not leave you. He will not, he, he will not forsake you. He will lead you to a place of new purpose, real life, and great adventure. There was, there was a guy uh, who said yes to Jesus, who followed him and, and lived out this crazy adventure. His name was Paul. And here's what he wrote about it. He says, if anyone is in Christ, if you're following Jesus, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. He says, you are a new creation. When you take the first part of the journey, you say yes to Jesus. You go from here to here. This spiritual high, it is amazing. But listen it is not the end. Look ahead at the, at the elevation map that Jesus has laid out for you. This is not the place where we go, well, I'm saved. I got my ticket to heaven punched, so I am good. I'm going to sit back, relax, and wait for Jesus to come back. No! The adventure is just getting started. God wants to take you to places that you can't even imagine. So what a view, right? I mean, this has been a, an amazing hike. We just got uh, here to the top of uh, Breathed Mountain. We're not exactly sure how to say that, to be honest, but we think it's Breathed Mountain here in the Dolly Sides. And about maybe two and a half hours ago is when we left our, our, our camp and we have been hiking basically just up <laughs> and just up and up and up. And it's been, there's been times where we just needed to say, we, we, gotta, we gotta take a break. Uh, we've had some some falls along the way and maybe some water some some wet shoes uh, and uh, different things like that but this is really a great image of that journey that Jesus says follow me I want to take you on in the adventure of a lifetime because we were so so excited just to be at a camp last night and just to see and hear the the, the, the running water that goes by our, our, our campsite. Um, and we had an, an image in our mind about what it would be like up here. But I'll tell you what, my imagination didn't see anything as amazing as this. And that's the journey that Jesus calls us to go on. He says, I have immeasurably more for you. I want to take you on this. If you will just stop settling for the, 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 the life that you're living, this life that's just a monotony and it's this, the same thing over and over again. I, I want to I wanna bring you so much more. And so many times, here's what I see, and, and churches are so guilty of this, of telling people, if you want to follow Jesus, and he says, hey, follow me, and you say, yes, Jesus, I want to follow you, you get baptized and all that, and, you, and you, 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 you're, you're with him, and then you just stop. For, for many people, they start coasting, they just they set up their little base camp and they wait for heaven. They just wait to die, wait for uh, the, the, the next life or whatever. And instead of saying, there is so much more, Jesus says, you want to stop here? No, 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 I, I've got so much more for you. Well, I love how Matt is talking about this journey that we take with Jesus. And along that journey, we become more and more like him. And through that journey, we can trust Jesus with our finances, things that he has given to us generously. So we invite you to be in prayer and to go to discoverypgh.com forward slash give. And something that is super important to us here at Discovery is community. It's not too late to sign up for a neighborhood group. Go to our website at discoverypgh.com forward slash neighborhood groups to get connected. Let's jump back in as Matt continues the journey. Well, we are here in my garage and you know, all over this place, there are signs of my boys growing up. I mean, I see some of their old shoes that they can no longer wear over here in a bin. I see some of their old toys, like the Thomas the Trains with the wooden track. Man, what a classic toy that was. Uh, some of their old stuffed animals that are now stuffed into a bin. I, I also see a lot of old books that we used to read over and over and over again when they were super small. Um, I see uh, 
brown bear, brown bear, you know, what do you see uh, peeking out right now? And spoiler alert, he sees a red bird looking at him. But over here is something very, very special to me. This is the growth chart of, of both Chase and Jackson. And I made sure back in 2018, before we moved to Pittsburgh from Ohio, I made sure to transfer the marks off of our old garage to this rod. And I've had this rod stored in a very special place for about two years. Because when we moved here, we rented a house. I couldn't put marks on their walls because I wanted the deposit back. But now that we own a home, it was time to make sure these marks on the rod got onto a more permanent spot in our house. So uh, I just did this a few weeks ago. It had been about two years since I last put marks on a wall to track their growth. So, you know, it wasn't surprising. Here's 2018, here's 2020. There's a big gap there. It wasn't surprising to me to see a big jump in their growth. Matter of fact, it would have been concerning if there hadn't been growth. If, if, if they weren't growing, it would have been a clear sign that something physically was wrong with them. It would be concerning if at night, if we were still reading Brown Bear, Brown Bear, and Goodnight Moon, instead of things like The Hobbit and, and Harry Potter. I mean, here's what's true. Growth is a sign of health and life. I heard these words from a very wise mentor of mine. Um, he said, healthy things live, living things grow, and growing things change. Can I just say that one more time so it really, really sinks in? Healthy things live, living things grow, and growing things change. You know, this is true physically with my boys, but it is just as true on our spiritual journey as well. When we look at that elevation map and Jesus says, follow me on this adventure of a lifetime, and we go from lost to found, from here to here, and then we stop, we stop moving, we stop growing, there is a massive problem because God has so much more adventure for you. There are so many followers of Jesus who have stopped growing. They've, they've stopped maturing. They were born again, and then 10, 20 years later, their growth chart, it just stops. The New Testament writers were so frustrated by this. They actually called these people out. They said, you know, why in the world are you still sucking down spiritual milk like an infant would when, when you should have been dining on a porterhouse steak by now? You say you're following Jesus, but your life, it doesn't look any different than anyone else's. You're not growing, you're not changing, you're not maturing. So you might want to check your map pin because you've stopped following Jesus. You know, oftentimes on this journey, Jesus will lead us through valleys to grow us and mature us and take us to places that we've never dreamed of before. You know, the elevation map of following Jesus tells us that we're going to go through hard, we're going to go through painful times. You know, Jesus went through them. He went through lots of hard times, even before the cross. And his first followers that we read about in the New Testament, they went through hard times. Why would we think it would be any different for us? Jesus told us, in this life, you will have trouble. But he also said, take heart, because I have overcome the world. And one follower of Jesus was his, was, was his half-brother, James. And here's what he wrote. He said, consider it pure joy 
whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. And perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And God will take you on a journey. And let me tell you right now, it doesn't mean that things are going to get better at first. Actually, they might get worse. They may be more painful. You you may even have more faith struggles. But if you continue to stick with God, you hold on to Him no matter what happens around you. I can assure you that if you hold on to Him and you put your faith in Him at some point, He's going to take your faith to a place of intimacy and trust and security that you never dreamed possible. If, you've, if you're willing to go through that crisis, that dip, that valley, He's going to take you to places that you're not going to believe. So in preparation for this trip, I was doing a little bit of reading. Um, and one thing I read about in, this, in the Dali Sads is that the, the military used to use this area for like airstrikes and testing of bombs and things like that. And uh, apparently there are still lots of um, live bombs in the woods. In the 1990s, they actually sent some exploratory groups up here to clear some of them out, but they still have signs as you coming onto the trail saying, if you see anything that looks like a grenade or bombs, uh, just put like a bandana around a tree and let us know, we'll take care of it. You know, that really doesn't concern me. But what did concern me is this one little line on the website that said, be bear aware. Yes, uh, apparently this year, 2020, we got murder hornets and everything else. We, they're having more black bear attacks, uh, sightings, and encounters with hikers. That the, and they have been, here's the word they used, they have been tense. Now, when you have your two young sons with you on a trip like this and you're not very experienced, that can make you feel a little tense as well. And so we have been trying to make sure that we are bear aware, that we are prepared for what might happen so that we can just try to be careful to make sure that the bears have no interest in our campsite. So right behind me here, if you're an experienced uh, hiker, you know what this is. It's a bear bag. And every night before we go to bed, we took all of our food, all of our trash, and we put it in that bag and we put it up in the air so that bears can't really get to it and that we put it about 100 yards away from our campsite. Because the last thing we want is the, the bear gets into it and tastes some delicious Nutella and goes, hmm, I wonder if there's some more in that blue tent over there. Yeah, we don't want that. Did you know that there is this book called The Worst Case Scenario, Survival Guide? And it came out several years ago, and there's some really weird stuff in there, like if you jump out of an airplane and your parachute doesn't open. What do you do? Or what happens if your good friend next to you needs an emergency tracheotomy and all you have is a knife and a ballpoint pen? What do you do? Well, there's also good information about what do you do if you are confronted by a bear in the woods. Let's see how well you do. I'm going to give you a multiple choice. Uh, what would you do? You come across a black bear, do you A, run, do you B, play dead, C, do you open up your shirt or your jacket to make yourself look bigger, or D, sing a gentle, pretty song? If you're watching this with us on a, on a live, would you put it there in the chat? What's your answer, A, B, C, or D? Well, the answer is actually C, open up your jacket to make yourself look bigger. Here's one more. What if you have that encounter and you have a child with you? Do you A, pick the child up? Do you B, shield the child with your body? C, shield your body with the child? Or D, run? Put it there in the chat. What do you think the answer is? Well, the answer is A. 
You pick the child up, just like the last question, to make yourself look bigger. Listen, the point of this, we've been talking about the path, the journey. Where are you on this journey? And a lot of us, when we get to that point where we follow Jesus and we go to that immediate like high of, man, I am with God. He is for me. Uh, I, I, I can talk to God and it feels like he's listening. Um, I, there's somebody who's sick or I needed a job and I prayed about it and he answered. And you just feel incredibly close with God. But it's naive to think especially when you read through the New Testament and about what other followers of Jesus experienced is you're not always going to stay at that place. Jesus doesn't want you to stay in that place. He wants to take you to places you've never been before, but to get there, you've got to go through some incredibly hard challenges. I've gone through them. Uh, others have gone through them. The people who are closest to God I know, they point back to those seasons as those are the hardest times to go through. And here's why I say this. Listen, there are times in your life when what's attacking you is you are ill-equipped to handle it on your own. If I come across a bear, I am ill-equipped to handle that on my own. And the same thing in our spiritual life. There's going to be things in our life that I'm just not big enough to handle. But you know what makes me bigger than I actually am? Here's the key. It's this word that, that you know it's so incredibly important. It's faith. Those times where you've got to hold on to God. Don't bail on Him. Don't say, God, I thought we had a deal. I'm going to take my ball and go home. Forget you, God, because you didn't watch out for me. I'm, I'm leaving. He wants you to stick it out. He wants you to persevere. He is refining you because He wants to take you to a place you've never been before. Faith makes you bigger than you've ever possibly could because God is going to walk through that time with you. It's hard. Absolutely it is. But God will show up every time and show you where He wants you to go and it's pretty amazing. Stay with it. Now, we're here on the top, but we never arrive in our, in our, in our relationship with God or following Jesus. There's all kinds of valleys. There's going to be some tougher things, even on this journey. But that's what following after Jesus is. Those moments of that dip, that valley that we push through, that we persevere through. That's that refining process. You know our new logo? That, 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 the map pin that we have continued to adopt for Discovery. The, I, what I love so much about that piece in the middle. It's, it's about Pittsburgh, right? It's that call out to Pittsburgh and the, the, the steel, ref, the refinery process of that, that, that heat up the metal the, 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 to make it tougher, to make it the gritty kind of piece of, uh, of steel that can be really used to do what it's supposed to do. God does the same thing in all of us. He refines us through that pressure moment, those painful times, so He can take us from here to there. So that's who we are. Church, as, as, as one of your pastors, my heart for you, my heart for my kids, my heart for, for, for people who don't even call discovery their, their home, for people who have not accepted Christ, is not to stop here, but to keep going and to realize who God has called them to be and, and help bring heaven to earth.